In this video, we will talk about how to determine if two sets have the same size and also what it means for a set to be countable. First, we note the observation that two finite sets have the same size if elements of one set can be paired with elements of the other set. So let's make an example. Uh, let's start off with this set A. And A is going to contain a star and square and circle and heart. Okay, so it's a set. And B is going to contain the elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so I have two sets. So how can we determine that they have the same size? Well, you can look at it and say, well, A has four things in it and B has four things in it. Um, but that's not very precise. What we want to be able to say is that we can pair every element from A to an element from B. Because if we can do that, um, and there aren't any elements left over that can't be paired, then clearly they have the same size. Okay, so for example, if we pair star with the element 4, and square with the element 2, and circle with the element 1, and heart with the element 3, then we've paired every element from A to an element from B. We've also paired ele every element from B to an element of A. So we could say now that yes, they have the same size. Okay, we can also extend this concept to infinite sets. Okay, so let me make two infinite sets. Okay, so we'll call uh, the first one A prime and the second one B prime. And um, let's say that A prime is the set of all uh, strings over alphabet A. Okay, so what does that mean? It looks like this. A, 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 except I've got dots saying this goes on forever, right? If it's all strings, then I can take any string in A and add an A to the end of it. I'm sorry, I can take any string in A prime and add a little A to the end of it and I have a new string, right? So like this set goes on forever. Um, and B prime is going to be the set of natural numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's also infinite, right? I can take any number from B prime, add 1 to it, and get another number from B prime. So I can go on forever. Okay, so um, we want to show that we can pair these. Okay, and the pairing I did before um, might have seemed a little wonky, but I wanted to show you it can be any pairing. Um, so it's not, it's not to say that there is only one pairing. If you can do um, one pairing, then you can do any number of pairings. So um, for A prime and B prime, we're gonna make it a little bit more um, natural, I suppose. And we're gonna pair the elements um, from A prime to the element in B prime that has the that is the length of the element in A prime. So here, um, AAA has length three, so we'll pair it to element three. AAAA has length four, so we'll pair it to element four. Okay, and then we could take any string from A prime, say this one, and we could find its um, pair in B prime based on the length of the one in A prime. Um, and we could just keep doing this forever, right? Um, so how do we know that this is truly a pairing? Well, <clears throat> every element in A prime is unique because this is a set and not a multi-set. Um, so by that I mean, uh, if I have the elements as I've written them so far, and I come down here later list, I'm not going to get this element again. Okay, three A's. I've already seen three A's. Um, so I don't have to worry about trying to find this pair in B prime. I've already matched that element. Okay, and as I, as I said it before, if I take each element and map it to the element, each element of A prime, and map it to the element of B prime that has the, that is the length of the element in A prime, 
um, these are going to be unique in each list, in each set. Okay? So I've shown that there is a pairing uh, between the two of these. And if I want to make it formal, um, I can say that this is a function f. And what does f do? Um, let's write what f does over here. So f of x, x is going to be an input. And we've noticed that f maps a prime to b prime. Okay, and what does f of x map to? It's going to map to the length of x, right? So as an example, if I put in f of a, I map to 1, and that's equal to the length of a. Okay, if I map, or if I take in f of a, a, I'm going to get 2, and that was equal to the length of a, a. Okay? So hopefully this is clear, um, that f is a function, and that it's mapping elements from a prime to elements of b prime, um, and that in this way we've created a pairing. And so we see that um, there is a pairing between these two things, and that also means that these two sets, a prime and b prime, have the same size. Okay, so um, we can also call this pairing a correspondence. Okay, and so we know that two sets have a correspondence if there exists A one to one onto function F mapping from A to B. Okay. So if such an F if such a function F that maps A to B exists, then um, so we know if two sets have a correspondence, correspondence, as described above, then the size of A is equal to the size of B. And for alternate notation, uh, we could say cardinality let me clean that up just a hair. We could say cardinality of A is equal to cardinality of B. Okay, it means the same thing. Size of A equals size of B, cardinality of A equals the cardinality of B. Okay, so let's digest that for a second. So what we're saying is, if we can find a function that's one to one and on two that maps from A to B, then we have a correspondence. And if we have a correspondence between these two sets, then they are the same size, okay? And that's exactly what we did here. Okay, F here was a one to one on two function that mapped from A to B, A prime to B prime, excuse me. Um, and this showed that these two infinite sets had the same size. So despite the fact that we can't actually present all of the elements here, like what we did with A to B. In A to B I said, here's all the elements, there's four in A and there's four in B. So we could see that they were the same size. If we have infinite sets, uh, we can never um, list out all of the items them and say, well, how many are there, right? Well, there's, there's infinite. Um, so we can't do the same thing, but what we can do is we can find this function, F, that's on two and one to one, mapping from the first set to the second set. And when we do that, once we've created this correspondence or this pairing, we know that these two sets must have the same size. Okay, so this is pretty powerful. Um, what else can we do with it? Well, um, let's show that um, two sets have the same size. 
And the two sets we're particularly going to look at are, um, we're going to look at N, which is going to be the set of natural numbers. And we're also going to look at E, which is going to be the set of even natural numbers. Okay, so first, um, first let's look at these sets. So let's look at N. Okay, so N's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you know, keep going forever. E is going to have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and on, on forever, right? And so the first thing you might say is, okay, fine, I can I can start pairing these guys. Let's pair this way. Okay, but what about these guys? What about all of my odds? Right? They don't appear in E. How do I pair those? Um, so your initial impression might be that N must be bigger than E, right? Because there must be elements in N that don't exist in E. We know this. Um, so isn't it true that N is bigger than E? Um, well, no. <laughs> Not actually. So um, again, we've got our definition of N. We've got our definition of E. We want to show that the size of E is equal to the size of N. That's what we need to do. Okay, so what does this mean we, that we need to do? We need to be able to find a mapping F maps E to N, or we could also find a mapping F that maps N to E. Either one of these is fine. If I can do either one of them, I've shown that there's a mapping from, um, oh, I've shown that there is a one-to-one -one onto mapping from one set to the other, and that will give me a correspondence. Um, so actually what we're going to do is we're going to do the second one. This one is just a little bit easier. They're both easy, um, but this one's a little bit easier. Okay, so um, let's take the function f of x equals 2x. Okay, so let's set up our sets again. Here's n. And here's e. And then f is going to be a function between them. Okay, so let me get my numbers going again in n. And on forever, right? In this we had 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and on for Okay, so I'm mapping from uh, n to e. So when I say f of x, x is going to be an element in n. So we'll take 1. 1 is an element in n, right? And what do we map it to? We map it to 2, uh, two times 1. So we map it to 2, right? And then let's take 2, which is an element in n. We multiply it by 2, we get 4. Okay, so you can see how this is going to go. Okay, um, and so if you ask yourself, um, well, for this to, to not be a one-to-one -one onto mapping, okay, um, then it must be the case that there is something, if it's not uh, onto, then there's something in E that is never mapped to by something in N, right? Um, so let's let that element be Y, okay? So if y is an element that is in E, so y is in E, and we're going to say um, that there does not exist an x such that f of x equals y. Okay? If I can find some x such that f of x does not equal y, then this is not on 2. Okay, well, how did I find y? I multiplied x by 2, right? So if I take y, 
and I divide it by 2, that's going to give me x. And since everything in the set of even natural numbers is even, um, I can take anything in my set of even natural numbers, divide it by 2, and get another natural number. Okay, so it's always true. There is always an x for any y in e. Okay, so we know that um, it is in fact on 2. Okay, so what if it's not 1 to 1? Um, this would mean that there is something in the set of natural numbers, um, actually there's two somethings in the set of natural numbers that map to the same something in the set of even numbers. Um, well, for that to be the case, based on the way that we have defined our function, um, that something, those two somethings in the set of natural numbers would have to be the same element, right? I'm taking an element, I'm multiplying it by two. I'm not going to get the same output unless the input is the same. Okay, so we know that um, this function is also one-to-one. -one. So this function is one-to-one -one and on two. So we have in fact created um, a correspondence. And so this means that in fact the size of n is equal to the size of e. Okay, so pretty cool, right? Um, we can extend this a little bit further to a definition. So we're going to say that a, that a set is countable if, okay, and there's two conditions, either it is finite Okay, so if I have a finite set, I can count it, right? We go back to our very first example with A and B. So if we go back to A and B, um, both A and B are finite, and I could count them. I could look at the elements in those sets and count them. Um, even if there were a million elements in those sets, it might take me a while, um, and I might enlist some help, right, to count all of the elements in the set, um, but I could do it. Okay, so that's countable. Or, um, if it's infinite and has the same size as n, the set of natural numbers. Okay, so we have just shown that, let's see if I can put this down here, E is countable. Okay, and, and frequently um, when the set is infinite, we will say it's countably infinite, just to distinguish from being countably finite. Okay, so in this case, E is countable or countably infinite. So pretty cool. Um, why is this important? Well, it turns out that there are some sets, there are some fine, infinite sets um, that are not countable. Okay, and we will talk about that in the next video.